Hey guys, oh, what is up? Red Panda Mining here. How you guys all doing? I hope you're all doing really well and having a really great day. In this video, I want to talk about and also upgrade my Ryzen 2700 machine here. And I wanna give you guys the reasons why I wanna upgrade this machine. And that is because of good old Adobe Premiere. And I have had many, many issues with this software along with my AMD system here, my video editing PC that I've had now for a good year and a half. And seriously, throughout that time, I have had many, many issues, you know, from Adobe Premiere freezing, my scrubbing performance is subpar, playback performance whenever I have to do some rendering and stuff, it's, it's quite slow at times, pretty laggy sometimes. And I've had some freezes as well as uh, some crashes as well. I don't know what to attribute it to, but when I had my i7 4790K system, I've never experienced much of those issues. I'm gonna believe that it's the Adobe products are just not optimized for the AMD system architecture of some sort. It just seems to run better on Intel systems. And yeah, I've done everything from like upgrading the BIOS on the motherboard, I've done overclocking on the Ryzen CPU to four gigahertz, done all the drivers, I've done all the little things that pretty much, you know, make everything new and latest everything I could think of, reformatting and all that kind of stuff, but ultimately, I think it's the Adobe product. It just seems to be more optimized for Intel processors and such. Okay, so I know you guys are probably gonna yell at your screens right now. Red Panda, don't get off AMD. Don't, don't, don't do it. Guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've had experience now with Adobe products and Adobe Premiere for the past three years, three or four years. And I'm gonna say that Intel has just been above and beyond a lot better. I've never experienced these issues with a Ryzen system, specifically just for Adobe Premiere, okay? Gaming and everything, streaming, it's amazing on this system. Don't get me wrong, I love it. It works perfect for streaming, it works perfect for gaming, but when it comes to doing my workflow and efficiency and reliability, Adobe Premiere, it just not, it's just not great on this system at all. So, my plan is to upgrade it to an Intel system and lo and behold, I have all the parts already on my desk here. I'm gonna place it into the computer today. And yeah, so look at this. I have a 10th gen Core i7 unlocked. This is the i7-10700K processor, LGA 1200. And as well, I coupled it with a Asus ROG Strix, Z or Z, wherever you're from, 490G gaming motherboard. And this is a MATX board, okay? Not an ATX, but an MATX. The reasons why is because I'm gonna be using the same case, same power supply, keep all the fans and all the LEDs and stuff the same. Uh, you guys can see my power supply is a Thermaltake RGB 750 watt. That's totally good. I may switch out my Radeon 7 for an NVIDIA card, like uh, RTX 2080, which I have on hand already. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with my Radeon 7, my 50, my beautiful 50th Radeon 7. Oh, I love this so much. As well, I also got 32 gigs of Corsair RGB Pro RAM, as well as a new Iron Wolf Pro 4 terabyte hard drive. That's just gonna be, you know, saving my projects and uh, videos and all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna reuse the NVMe drive that I have in there to move to this motherboard here. So that should be good. As well, I have some other SSDs and hard drives in that machine. I'm just gonna keep in there. So yeah, I hope this process processor is going to be good, an i7, I guess we'll see. So I'm actually going to do a quick export here and I'm going to time it. So I'm just going to get my stopwatch here and we're going to do an export of my building my Vega 56 part 5 video and we're going to see how long it's going to take to export this whole video. Call it test, going to save, okay and I have all my other stuff is the same. And I forgot to mention on the new Intel system, I'm hoping to use good old QuickSync. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna hit export and I'm gonna start this at the same time. So three, two, one. Okay, so we shall see how long this takes. Okay, 99% and it should be done. Okay, gonna hit stop and it's about three minutes and 15, uh, three minutes and 13 seconds. I, I stopped it a little bit later. So I'm gonna keep that recorded and then we're gonna do the same project render on the Intel system once I have this all taken out and it's actually gonna take me a while. I have to reformat it and I'm gonna start pretty much brand new on this system. Okay, so I'm not gonna waste any time. Oh, I totally forgot to mention, I have a sweet CPU cooler for this and it's still in the box here. Let me quickly open it up here. Okay, this, this thing is heavy. Okay, I have an EVGA closed loop CPU cooler. 
It's a 280 millimeter radiator and it should be pretty cool. Hopefully it'll fit in my Fantex Evolve case. Should be good. So yeah, you guys will see the system built in three, two, one. Nope, I lied. I have an issue. And it's not because of the parts that I bought here, but it's the power supply that I currently have, okay? So I just wanted to show you guys here this motherboard, which is pretty baller. I, I'm just amazed at how many features this motherboard has. Look at this thing. It's just so nice, so cool. Okay, but anyways, this part here, this motherboard requires an 8-pin CPU and a 4-pin here. But the power supply that I have currently in my build right over there, a Thermaltake 750-watt power supply. The RGB Tough Power Grand version. Wow, my computer is super dusty. I needed to clean that up later. It only has one 8 pin CPU cable. So I am curious to know if I actually do need this or not. But I want to be careful and I want to make sure all the power cables are plugged into this motherboard. It's probably because of like an overclocking feature or it needs more power if I decide to overclock it, which I probably might. But yeah, you guys can see I've already put in the CPU, got in the RAM, and look at this beautiful. Beautiful EVGA AIO closed loop water cooler. One question I actually wanted to ask if you guys think I should change out these fans. I've never seen fans like this before. It's like kind of like indented here. But in my Fantex case currently, I have these Noctua 140 millimeter fans already. So I wonder if I should just use these. Has static pressure, all that kind of stuff. Not sure if that'll help out with the rad for this EVGA cooler. I'm probably gonna stick with these fans for now, but let me know in the comments if you guys think the Noctua's are gonna be better. But anyways, I ordered another power supply off Amazon. I ordered a Corsair, I think an AX 850 watt. It has two CPU eight pins. It's a titanium rated power supply. So hopefully that should be nice and good. So I'm gonna wait for that on Amazon. Once I have that, I'll put it all together. So then you guys will see this built in three, two, one. And there we go. You guys can see it's all built. Look at that EVGA AIO, looks pretty good. Look at my beautiful Radeon 7, it is back in. And uh, one thing I want to note is I did order some red power supply cables, like extenders. So I'm not just using these black cables, so I'm gonna put some extenders on here. And so it should hopefully look better, as well as the 24 pin. Not gonna see that black anymore, it should be red. As well as the CPU power cables, they're gonna be red as well. So once I get that cable kit in, it should be good. And you guys can see my new Corsair AX850 watt power supply. One thing to notice is pretty funny is that this is like some fake RGB thing. It's like magnetic. It came with like this white and blue stripe as well. It's like fake RGB. I thought that was pretty funny. I thought I'd show you guys that. Okay, the build is here. I haven't turned it on yet. Let's go ahead and see if it posts. And uh, looks like it turned on some RGB Strix light there. That's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna hit the power button. Okay. Alrighty. Let's just see if it posts. Let's see if it posts. Pressing the delete keyboard. Nothing's coming up yet. Oh, there we go. Republic of Gamers. Yeah. All right, so we are in the BIOS. It looks pretty good. It's got an i7 10700K CPU, 3800 megahertz, 32 gigs of RAM. Looks pretty good. Oh, one thing I noticed is it says 2133 megahertz. So I'm gonna have to change that in the XMP profile and hopefully that should run up at 32 megahertz. Okay, guys, I think that's good, but I'm gonna go ahead now and get Windows installed and all my programs and then we'll run the benchmark and see if this system is gonna be faster at rendering. Okay, so I will be right back. Okay, so we ran into a little issue with the RAM that I had in already. I'm actually using my old RAM right now from my old computer. It's the same brand, it's 32 gigabytes of RAM, but the memory frequency at 3200 would not run on this board for some reason. And the XMP profile would not work as well, so it's running at 2667 right now. Uh, which is my old RAM, so I took out the 3200 megahertz RAM, and so we're using this for now. For the life of me, I was not able to make it run at 3200 megahertz, okay? So if you guys have any reservations or anything that I could try to make it work, I tried doing custom RAM timings and all that kind of stuff. I even tried overclocking the CPU, but it, it just wouldn't post at 3200 megahertz. I even looked at the motherboard website to see if it's compatible on this motherboard, and it said the RAM that I got, 3200 megahertz, 
32 gigs of RAM from Corsair should work on this motherboard. So I'm not sure if I have a bad batch of RAM or something, but it would run fine at 2133 megahertz because I already reformatted the computer. Yeah, so I guess I'm just gonna stick with this RAM for now and uh, I guess I'll troubleshoot after this video. But I just wanted to show you guys the temperature of the CPU is pretty good, 36 degrees Celsius. I think that's pretty good. So, okay guys, I will see you back when I have everything installed in Windows. Okay, <laughs> that took a long time, but I got everything installed, all the drivers and everything and software, all that I need for running my editing PC here. But the big things that I got working now is the Intel QuickSync, which is gonna be running off the integrated graphics card. And let me tell you guys right now, like it's night and day. It's, it, the performance is just crazy fast. I can tell this is a lot faster than my 2700. Playback has been instantaneous. I haven't had any crashes or anything yet. I guess I have to use this for a long time and then I'll see if there, there's gonna be any issues. But let's go ahead and we're gonna see how long it'll take to export this video. So this was my Ryzen 2700, three minutes and 15 seconds or three minutes, 12 seconds. And we're gonna use the same video on this new 10700K machine. So let me go ahead and export this. I already have the hardware encoding enabled that's for quick sync and gonna leave everything else the same and we're gonna do this and let's hit export and gonna start the time there we go okay so we'll see how long this will take yeah I think this is gonna beat my 2700 but you guys can see here it's utilizing the iGPU for the encoding and as well as my Radeon 7 and look at that the CPU is at 10% utilization. I remember seeing my Ryzen 2700 at like 100% at most times when I was doing exporting. And yeah, this is great. Utilizing both the iGPU and my Radeon 7. And we'll see if it'll beat 3 minutes and 12 seconds. Okay, almost there, 94%. 2 minutes and 16, 17 seconds. This is looking to be much, much faster. Oh man, this is this is really good. This is really good. 227. And it looks like it is done. I hit it stop. And it exported in two minutes and 32 seconds. Guys, uh, I call that a success. And uh, it looks like it shaved off uh, 45 seconds, 42 seconds from the Ryzen 2700. So I think that is awesome. I mean, I wasn't too worried in exporting times, but more so of the timeline performance and uh, uh, scrubbing and stuff. It just seems a lot more instant now. And playback performance seems a lot a lot faster, a lot better. So yeah, guys, I think that's it. Let me know what you think about what I just did today in this video. And yeah, I, I'm really happy with my new system now. Look at that, 10 700K, 32 gigs of RAM. And yeah, this is, this is good, this is really good. All right, so anyways guys, let me know what you think about my build here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one, and peace out.